May 11th and it's the Oshkosh Advisory Park board meeting. So tonight we're doing this remotely for some of us. So those on their WebEx, please don't use chat and keep your microphones muted. If you want to talk, we'll try be you know, raising your hand. I don't we usually don't talk over each other, so I think it's going to be okay if you just unmute and talk, but you know, kind of to give the high signs so that everybody knows that um, someone has some feedback. Anything else I'm missing? No? All right, the meeting is called to order. Roll call. Bartelt. You can just. No, I see you. <laughs> Davis. Here. Dearth. Groyal. Here. Hudak. Here. Metz. Miller. Here. Millet. Here. And Peschel. Here. Fabulous, thank you. All right, so the approval of the December minutes. Any comments or questions about the December minutes? No. Nope. All right. All right. Anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. All right, and then the February minutes. Comments, questions? I'll make a motion to accept the February minutes as well. Second. Bill, you may have to speak more. Oh, sorry. Devin, did you were you are you guys able to hear Bill and us okay on your end? Okay, then we're fine. Thank you. It's hard to hear Bill a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to take a vote on the minutes. Take a vote? Better approve the minutes, yeah. You can just do a voice vote, approve. Oh. To approve the minutes? Okay. All in favor of approving the December 9th, 2019 minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. All in favor of approving the February 10th, 2020 minutes? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Thank you. Any old business? All right. All right. New business. We're going to go over the capital improvement plan with focusing on 2021 and 2022. Ray? All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, for those of you who are new to the Advisory Parks Board, this is a, um, an annual um, item that we take care of, typically in May, sometimes June. Um, but the Parks Board will review the recommendations um, for the five-year CIP and um, they can make changes, uh, suggest changes, talk about those. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through each of the items, um, but the Common Council it really appreciates the Parks Board giving their input on these. So um, if you have any questions as we go through, if you've been here before uh, for some of these meetings, you'll know that um, we don't get all of the um, items or projects that we request in a year. So if they're not funded, for example, if there's projects that weren't funded in 2020, those get pushed back into 21 or 22 based on the priorities. So it kind of shifts things um, based on what gets funded. Um, so what we'll do is, what I want to do is go through the items that we have in 2020, kind of give you a status update. Um, we'll talk about, and we primarily want to focus on the projects for 21 and 22. And the reason we do that is um, city manager and a finance director um, primarily try to balance out for the next two years. And again, same reason is if we, put, if we put too much focus on things that are in years three, four, and five, some of those projects may be delayed based on what's funded over the next two years. So I don't want to spin our wheels too much on the last three years, but we'll definitely go through those items and have those discussions. So just to touch on um, 2020, um, Congress Avenue tot lot playground equipment and surfacing. That project was actually funded by um, some of the Healthy Neighborhoods funding. Uh, that project is in progress right now. Um, most of the equipment is already up. Uh, the perimeter sidewalk concrete has been poured. Um, so they'll continue to work on that over the next week or so. We'll go in and do some restoration. Um, and then also part of that project is to replace the, um, the fencing that's out there, the chain link fencing. And what we'll probably do is hold off 
Um, to get that done, we have to send that out for quotes, um, get those in, but we may wait until maybe when we get in the summer, the ground's a little more solid, um, but we'll, we'll see how things progress between now and then. But at least the playground equipment um, will be up and installed over the next couple of weeks here. So if you haven't been able to drive around, feel free to take a drive and see that project in progress. Um, Rainbow Memorial Park improvements, the design services. Um, part of the Rainbow Memorial Park called for some major improvements on the south end of the park, um, including some area around the boat launch, um, getting rid of the existing restroom shelter building, expanding parking. And that's, this project, even though it was funded this year, I met with the city manager and um, the finance director and this is one that we have put on hold at this point. And a lot of that has to do with um, the COVID issue, um, being realistic on um, the Rainbow Memorial Park project. I believe we had in the budget for just under $3 million um, over the next year or two. And um, as we take a look at the, the current situation and the priority for us, as you'll see over the next two years, is to try to get um, a large sum of money for our parks administration building so what we did was step back and said this is a project um, the rainbow memorial park one is one that we really don't feel um, is going to get funded and um, we weren't going to st start spending monies on a plan that we don't think are going to be um, implemented in the near future so um, that that project's on hold at this point next one is lakeshore park site development um, if you recall, we do have proceeds from the sale of the property um, budgeted this year. What we had to do, um, we've been working with um, UW-Milwaukee, the archaeologists that have helped out on the site previously. Um, I had some email correspondence with them today. They've done their initial site um, evaluation, and they will be coming out to take a look at primarily or specifically the area where our current um, maintenance building is at the end of Pinocchio. That's where we're looking at for the four season building. But before we can start doing any digging or any, actually before I even start doing the planning, um, they will come out and do some site further, some further site investigation, actually do some digging to make sure that, um, that there's no issues as far as archeological items out there. Um, their initial response um, to us after looking at the site is they feel that it's outside of the areas of concern, but they are also still gonna come in and, and do some, some digging just to make sure. So once we have that cleared through um, the archeologists, what we'll then do is we will uh, put together a, a request for proposal for firms to um, come in and give us proposals for the four season building, along with some engineering of the area as well. So we're continuing to work on that, um, but we're in the holding stage until the archeological side of things are completed. Next item is um, West Haven Circle Park, uh, the ball field updates. That project is um, funded as in planned for um, later this summer into the fall of 2020. Um, so you'll see that we're holding off doing that um, just due to the uncertainty of the, the youth baseball programs and when they might have to use some of the fields. Um, but we will be tackling that project this fall. Spanbauer Field, uh, the restrooms renovation, or for people who used to know it as Southside Lighted, um, that project was also funded. That's, this is the one um, that we've typically been trying to do one restroom facility a year, um, where we essentially go in, demo the interior, and then we um, have a contractor come in and make sure that it's ADA compliant, put in more um, efficient um, facilities and so forth. And we um, just received the bids on that last week, came in favorably, so I believe that will be going to the Common Council for an award um, within the next month to start that project. Uh, Parks Department building renovation phase one. Um, this project was unfunded. Um, and as I note here, we'll include dollars in the 21 and 22 CIP. Essentially what the first phase of that would be is the acquisition of one property to the south of our administrative building, um, which would we'd be able to expand our parking lot that way, and then um, be able to build a larger facility onto our existing parking lot. Um, so that was some of the, the dollars that we're looking at in that amount. 
Um, West Haven Circle Park lighting, that project was unfunded and we've included it in, I believe the dates are still correct, in 2021, we requested funding for that. Stevens Park lighting, unfunded, and I believe it's still correct that we put that in 22, correct? And then Menominee Park Zoo improvements, um, another unfunded um, that was essentially somehow eliminated from the CIP. We are requesting in 2021 some dollars um, to help with some of the Menominee Park Zoo improvements. So that kind of gets you up to speed on um, what was funded in 2020. Any questions on any of those before I jump into 21? All right, so the next page, 2021, um, the top priority for us, as, as I've stated, is our administration building. Um, this has been a, um, a project that's been talked about since, since I started here with the city 10 years ago. Um, it's been in the CIP for the last couple of years. And so the council and uh, had directed the city manager and, and our facilities maintenance staff um, to work with the various city departments to take a look at each city building and start coming up with plans for renovations or improvements that need to be done. And um, the parks building has been identified as the top building that really needs to be addressed. Um, so the first um, year of borrowing, we'd be looking at possibly in 21, uh, the entire project we're estimating at a cost of between five and six million dollars so we're looking at a uh, possible one year one borrowing next year of three million dollars um, to start funding that project if it were funded what we'd be able to do is at least start in um, later next year possibly start that project and then if the funding in 2022 of the the remainder of the project would be it would be a project that would carry over into 2022 as well so that's kind of how we're, be, we're able to try to fund it and break it out over a couple of years. Ray? Yes. So you know how I feel about spending money on design and plans on things that don't happen. So we're not going to spend any money this year on design and plans until we actually get this approved by council. Is, is that accurate, the, the, the money and everything for this? We actually had... Um, back when the central garage or the field operations facility was being constructed in 2012, we had at least a preliminary concept um, we worked on with Cooney Architects back then. What we have done is um, the finance director and the city manager have allowed us to get into an agreement with Cooney Architects. It's about $8,000 that we're gonna be spending. We've actually got into the process for them to review that um, concept plan that they've provided us look at our programming so basically as our department grown since then what do we need over the next 25 to 30 years so we are in that conceptual design phase again but it's more refining of what was kind of on paper in 2012 so eight grand is it for this year at this point yes until anything else would go to the common council for approval. okay yes. All right. thanks sure um, so going down this list and, and again this is kind of how um, as we talked about it during staff um, how we looked at for some of our priorities and what we typically try to look at is um, you know projects that take care of either safety health um, uh, projects that we really feel have been deferred for years or have been pushed back from a number of um, different years so the second project that that we would be recommending is South Park tennis court reconstruction um, these courts are in, in pretty bad shape um, the Recreation Department does typically use these for their um, tennis lessons. And what we would be doing as part of this project, similar to how we did Menominee Park, um, we'd be looking to incorporate some pickleball courts so that there's more pickleball courts within the city and essentially some pickleball courts located on the, the south side of the city. So this project um, we feel is, is beneficial. We've seen the heavy use of the pickleball courts. Um, we do know that the tennis lessons uh, through the Recreation Department, uh, the YMCA has requested some facilities from us in the past, whether or not they would use those or not. Um, but we definitely do need more pickleball courts, so that's what our thinking is on this one. Next project is, um, if you've been on for a couple of years, you know that um, previously um, Jim Michelson was on the Parks Board for a number of years and um, his passion was uh, bike and pedestrian facilities and he's now on the Bike and Ped Committee. And Jim has really um, tried to get some improvements at the uh, Menominee Park Trail, um, essentially from the pump station at Melvin Avenue uh, north, even north of the fishing pier off in the, um, New York and Nevada area, 
The trail in that area, although it's not in terrible shape for a trail that's 25 plus years old, um, it does sit lower than some of the surrounding area. So sometimes if we get heavy rain or during the winter we get a thaw, uh, there is um, ponding and pooling of water that occurs on the trail. So what we've been doing is taking a look at uh, the site with our engineering department. We walked the site and again, um, saw that the trail's not in terrible shape. It's a matter of the drainage. And um, if you're around Menominee Park, you know there's a number of areas where the water tends to pool and puddle. And if it's um, allowed to um, drain across the trail, it's gonna get caught onto the trail and cause freezing and, and water puddles. So in talking with our engineering and our stormwater engineers, they suggested we take a look at trying to improve the drainage in those areas. Um, so what we're looking to do is request $75,000 to look at those uh, specific areas to try to improve the drainage to divert the water before it gets be to the trail. So either getting some drain tile in or some catch basins and some piping so that we can bypass the trail, get the water either underneath or around the trail into some of the, um, the outfalls. Um, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee met last week and I provided a memo to them and um, Jim Michelson actually walked the site with us a couple weeks ago and Bike and Ped Committee is also uh, would like the Parks Board to recommend this project as well. So wanted to pass that along to you. Next project, West Haven Circle Park Playground Equipment and Surfacing. And then just under that, you'll see West Haven Circle Park Lighting. If you recall, when we um, did the um, South Park Lagoon project, we took a look at some of the other amenities in that park and tried to identify which ones we need to update. So we put in new playground equipment, um, the new parking lot, and some of the trails were improved. Same thing we're trying to do here at West Haven. We're improving the ball diamond this year. Um, and what we'd like to try to do is get the equipment and the park lighting um, completed next year and, and really have, um, and the restroom facility was done last year. So it's really, again, focusing on a park, getting things improved, and then moving on to some of the other parks and trying to do the same. Uh, the next project, Roll Park Play Equipment and Surfacing. As we looked at these playgrounds, um, these are some playgrounds that are, were installed in 2001 to 2003, roughly. Um, so these are some of the oldest playground equipments that we have in the city. Um, typically what we try to do is um, get the playgrounds replaced every 15 to 17 years. Um, once we start hitting that 20 year mark, they're really um, the replacement pieces um, that we need for equipment is either no longer manufactured and the safety guidelines change so much over those 20 years that we need to make sure we're addressing the safety issues. So these are some of the older pieces of equipment in the system. Um, the next item is a new one, Riverwalk Light Bollards. Um, we all know the improvements uh, that have been done along the Riverwalk for the last 10 years. <clears throat> um, whenever there's a section of Riverwalk done, um, that trail maintenance and um, upkeep is um, essentially the Parks Department's responsibility, as is the utilities for uh, the LED lights, the trail lights, all come out of our Parks Department budget. Um, as, we, as we're 10 years into the first trail system at Riverside Park, um, you probably have seen a number of the light bollards either have been damaged, repaired, replaced. Um, so working with our electric division, we're going to start requesting every couple of years about $25,000 because we need to start replacing and planning for inventory for some of those light bollards. Um, so each bollard costs roughly $1,000. Just so you know, we had um, a recent quote come in because of another um, the Lakeshore Park Trail that's going on as well as another section of the Riverwalk that's currently in planning. So um, about $1,000 each. Um, the next item, Menominee Park Zoo improvements. This is one Chad and I really feel we need to start taking a look at for some improvements there. The pathways, some of the fencing. Um, I'm sure that many of you have been there have, have noticed the paths there are, um, are not in the best condition. Um, it's heavily used. And then some of the fencing as well needs to, uh, to be updated and repaired. Then the final item that we're recommending is um, this is a project Riverside Cemetery Road repaving. Every other year um, we try to request $25,000. Um, what this does, it allows um, Bill to work with our streets division. This pays for the materials to redo some roadways out at Riverside Cemetery um, and the streets division does it. So it's really um, a collaboration with our department and streets and us paying for the, the material costs. And again, you'll see it in this document that 
every other year that's a request um, and we've started doing that I think back in 2009 and the council has has seen that um, improve the roads out in the, the cemetery so those that's the list for 21 so I'd like to see if we can take any questions or comments and before I jump into the next one um. We got four right now. There's three total tennis courts. Currently, there's three, and I think what we'd be looking at is going down to two tennis courts. Um, we'd have to widen the existing, um, the existing um, base of the the existing tennis courts a little bit. But then we'd be doing four pickleball courts. So two tennis and four more pickleball courts, um, similar to how we have them at Menominee again. Roll Park was? When I put all of the documents together, the oldest one was 04. Four or five. I thought that one was later. It's, it seems like fairly new, but it's nope. early 2000s, Lester. What we did was in some improvements there. We put the perimeter walk in and actually put new wood fiber in there probably six years ago or so. Yeah, four or five. Five Within years. about last five years or so. So that's maybe what you saw was some of those improvements. It's still the existing old playground. So like I said, everything that's in this list is either 2001 to up to 2006 in that range, basically. Yes. Which section? <laughs> Yeah, Bob, I'd have to check on that and get back to you. I couldn't even give you a number. For this 25,000? That would get us 25 lights, and we probably have right now at least a dozen that are either damaged or not working. And then we, um, as they continue to go out on us or get damaged, then we'd be putting in the new ones for the old so essentially replacing what's damaged or not working now and then having a small inventory as we go over the next year or two to replace whatever else gets damaged or not working okay. yes because currently currently we don't and if we um, need to um, Darlene from the planning department occasionally has a few in stock with our electric department We've been able to borrow some of those, and you'll see, I think, on the council agenda tomorrow night, we need to pay back some of those that we used last year. Um, so that's a portion of how we've been able to work with Darlene, but we need to keep her inventory um, for those new sections as well. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. I will jump to 2022. Oh, let me let me highlight in here because you don't see in 21 any funding requests for Lakeshore Park. Reason being, um, we feel that by the time we get into design of the Four Season Building and the amenities we need around that, that is going to be the major project that takes us to the end of this year into 2021. So that'll be a continuation of the dollars that we have funded in this year's CIP. So you'll notice there's nothing in 21 because we're gonna be focusing on still utilizing that project um, from this year. So jump into 22, um, again, this would be um, the Parks Department building renovation. This would be year two of the borrowing. Um, you'll start seeing here, we're requesting some additional dollars for Lakeshore Park phase one development. Um, we're estimating about a half million dollars. And if you look in your um, Lakeshore Park master plan you'll see a number of those items in here um, that are outside of the the building envelope there's still some some parking areas there's some uh, pathways as well as um, some of the terrace areas around the building that may not be able to be funded out of um, the initial 1.7 to 2 million dollars that we have um, for the project at this point um, in addition we are applying for a grant um, it actually starts through the DNR 
and then it gets recommended from the DNR as one of the potential projects from Wisconsin for a national parks grant. Um, we can receive up to a million dollars for um, unique park projects, and that is the potential to be funded for two years at a million dollars. So we're currently applying for some grant funding to assist as well. So if we're successful, some of the dollars from the city would be some of those matching dollars that we'd have for any potential grants as well. Um, you're gonna start seeing again some more play equipment in here, 44th Parallel Park. Um, we're also looking at doing the lighting, same reasoning, if we can try to get um, some improvements done while we're in there doing um, heavy equipment moving around. It makes sense to try to get a couple items done while we're in there. Abbey Park play equipment and surfacing. Um, Rainbow Memorial Park play equipment and surfacing. And then there's a couple park lighting projects that, again, um, I think have been delayed for a couple of years. Um, as we talked about, we tried to do one restroom each year to upgrade our restroom facilities. I think we're pretty close on having those all completed. Chad, I Think we're, except for Menominee. So we're just about um, completed with the major restroom renovations. So um, we'd like to start focusing more on some of the park lighting as well. That is 22, and I'll take any questions you might have on that. I guess, you know, before we go, oh, yes. Okay. I know I've asked this before, but so with the lighting, are we up? them to like solar or you know more cost effective yes these are we uh, we convert to led and it's a consistent um light standard and so forth that we have throughout the parks that we identified well i probably five years ago at least um so that what we can do is use those interchangeable we can use it parts interchangeable it's a lot easier for our elective electric division for us as well um, there's some similar lights that they've been using in on the west side of oshkosh and some of the new subdivisions and it matches those so it really helps us throughout the city as far as replacement parts and some of that as well okay before i get too far along i guess amy if you don't mind we can take 21 and if there's any questions or consideration if you want to move things around again this is what we felt but you guys are free to have some discussion on if you if you feel a project is um, should be moved around or prioritized differently always looking for that type of input so if you want to look at 21 and 22 at the same time that would be great Yes. So regarding the Menominee Park Trail improvements and drainage, is it cheaper just to raise, uh, raise the ground level to, you know, to the drainage versus going under and doing trip drain tiles? No, because that's uh, it's a lot of earthwork and a lot of moving, and if you raise the, the – um, the earth on that side of the trail, it's still going to drain towards the path. The path will be lower, so we'll still have issues with the water draining because it wants to get to the lake. So we need to somehow divert it around the path. So you understand what I'm saying? If we raise that side of it, okay. So that's why um, the engineer said we got to divert it somehow and keep it off the trail initially. So. No questions, then what we can do is jump into 23. And like I said, I'll read these, really not get into a lot of um, explanation unless you'd really want. Um, and feel free to, to ans uh, ask those questions. You'll see a couple of new parks. We have not named them yet. Um, that'll be coming in the future. Um, park Site B, as we called it, is the new uh, park. It's about an acre and a half out at uh, the intersection of roughly 9th and Clareville. That's a subdivision that was approved last year or two years ago. And um, there is new homes being built. We've actually had one of the new residents um, email us last week asking us about what plans are for that park. Um, currently, it's been graded and seeded. Our guys started mowing it late last year, so it's on our mowing route. Um, but we need to start planning for getting some type of amenities in there. 
Um, so you can see that we're earmarking roughly 300,000 and what we would envision there would be at least getting some play structure in, some initial pathways and connections to sidewalks or anything in the area. Um, and that's pretty much what that 300,000 might cover, but at least getting something developed out in those new areas as people move in. Um, Park site A is actually um, down on, on Ripple in Oregon, and that was um, dedicated probably three years ago, roughly, from the developer out there. Um, really nothing has been done. Um, it's a site that um, when we accepted it through the Park Board and Plan Commission, um, it's a site that we thought we'd be able to um, either acquire additional park property or get more dedicated as things develop out there. Um, I forgot to look at the acreage. Either of you remember what the acreage is on that one? Um, I don't remember the acreage, but we can get that. But essentially, um, we'd be looking at a larger park out there with some future expansion, whether that's purchase or dedication as things develop. Um, Menominee Park road construction, um, you'll see, and in, in, if you haven't been through the roads, um, we, we get complaints you know, all the time on the road conditions out there. So we really need to start taking a look at getting that phased in. Um, we're putting in over the next two years, so 23 and 24, I believe, um, Rui, 23 and 25, maybe we'll see, but at least getting some earmarked dollars to start doing some road repairs out there. Um, being our largest community park and probably our most heavily used, um, we need to really take a look at getting some in improvements done on those roads. Lakeshore Park development, again, as I talked about, um, these are some dollars that we'd need to possibly match some grant funding, but also to continue development of the park site. Tennis Park, or Tennis Park, Tech Miller Park, tennis court reconstruction. Um, Roosh Park, some further development out there. If you recall, we have a Roosh Park master plan, and there's some trails and some boardwalk connections um, on the western portion um, that is currently undeveloped. Um, but that would be something to be able to do is to try to expand some of the trails out at Roosh Park. Menominee Park, parking lot and Reed's Fields design. This is a project similar to the Rainbow Memorial Park project um, that we have pushed back based on the current situation with COVID, um, the current situation with trying to prioritize and get our building funded. Um, this is a project that we'd be looking at um, as part of the Menominee Park plan to redo those two ball fields at Reed's um, and as well as redoing the parking lot, expanding on the parking lot so that um, there's more boat and trailer parking. And when we have ball diamonds and other things going on, there's additional parking down there. Um, with the decline, the major decline in adult use, the adult sp um, softball programs, um, this is one that we'd be looking to possibly target as a youth sports complex, having two um, hopefully sports turf ball fields out at REITs, and then um, having some other of the ball fields available for use, and then in future years or future fundraising, maybe improve on some of those ball diamonds that are out there as well. So this would be the design phase of that project. Um, project at Stevens Park, play equipment replacement, um, Quarry Park restroom update, Stegbauer Park restroom shelter building, and then this would be the um, every other year for the Riverside Cemetery road repaving. I can. Sure. The Quarry Park restroom update. Are we talking about taking down the building towards the east side of the property there? I mean, the left side? This would be a major update of that one. So pretty much demoing the interior, getting it um, again up to ADA standards, uh, making, making the restrooms compliant and more efficient. Um, we do have um, the youth soccer and youth football have requested to use some of that area for storage. So we try to accommodate potentially some of those storage requests as well. Um, so number seven you're talking about on our list, correct? Yes, that 
that's designed for um, renovating the parking lot, expanding the parking lot. If you take a look at the Menominee Park Master Plan, our maintenance building that's currently there is called for uh, removal. The tennis courts would be removed and parking would be expanded up into that area. Tennis courts would be relocated. Volleyball, um, volleyball I'm sorry. Yeah. Volleyball courts would be relocated down closer to the, um, the beach area. Six in Idaho, yes. Can you put your can you want to put your mic up closer to your mouth a little bit, Bob? It's just a little quiet. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's near the basketball court. When that road was redone a couple of years back, we actually stubbed utilities into that park, um, knowing that this might be a, a possibility in the future years. So it'd be a smaller area with just a very small shelter overhang on it. No, I, I think that's a great spot. It's a, it's a strong residential neighborhood over there. So Correct. If you want a picture of size, you can probably utilize Stevens Park as like a template of what it may or may not may look like in time, that size. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions on 23 items? We'll go into 24. Um, Menominee Park Road, again, earmarking some dollars for a second phase there. Um, here's where you um, start to see some of the big dollar amounts for some potential improvements at Menominee Park for the Reeds Fields and parking lot. Um, we've had some initial discussions um, when this was a little bit further up in our, our plans um, that there might be some fundraising opportunities with some of the user groups. Uh, potentially with the Convention Visitors Bureau uh, based on the number of fishing tournaments and potential for other um, youth baseball field or youth baseball and softball tournaments taking place. Um, so those were some of the discussions we had um, again prior to the COVID-19 but um, by then hopefully things are um, getting a little bit better stronger for the community. Um, 44th Park Tennis Court Reconstruction, Stevens Park Tennis Court Reconstruction, West Haven Circle Park, court reconstruction. Um, some dollars earmarked for again, Menominee Park Zoo improvements. Rainbow Memorial Park design. Again, this would be um, doing what we had the money this year budgeted, but again, pushing the project back based on uh, economic conditions. Abe Rochland Park play equipment and then West Algoma Park play equipment. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, so when I was on the council the first time in 2009 to 2013, um, I remember you know, through the, the renovation and reconstruction of 44th Parallel of Stevens Park and I believe the West Pacific Circle Telescope. My, my question is I'm wondering, are those are the prices for, for reconstruction this one it's not um the fencing and everything bob would probably be reutilized at these because when we did those projects the fencing was replaced so the fencing is typically something we can reuse um, but these are, are pretty accurate costs based on today's cost from what we've get from what we're getting from our tennis um, consultant that we use and we're basing it really off of what South Park tennis court project was um, so that for three courts at this point was right around 300 or just over 300 so this one roughly a hundred dollar or hundred hundred thousand dollars uh, for the courts there and again it's going to depend you know once we get to that point what asphalt materials are going for and um, things like that so at, as of today's date these dollar figures are, are fairly accurate Anybody else? Ray, so so streets. There there was a conversation a couple of years ago, um, like like the roads going through our parks was going to end up on on the streets budget. Is that is that not 
going to happen as a, as a I think um, discussions we have um, with the city manager and, and James Robbie and his staff really doesn't matter whose budget it goes into. Okay. It has to be done. Um, and I understand that it might free up some more dollars potentially for parks, but, um, but a lot of these are considered private roads in a city park. It, and, and Becky, please don't take this as me talking for you, but I, I think Becky and I have talked about this in the past where that stretch coming around uh, around our, our new restroom and shelter in Menominee, and then as you go by the old carousel and then approach the bridge is, is terrible. And if we could get some temporary work in there sooner than later, I think that's important. Becky, you want to chime in at all? Oh, I just agree with you. especially with all the traffic from um, 4th of July and everything else. I mean, that's your car. I can help you both out, and probably in the next two weeks, you're going to see that section up to the bridge, um, the Cooper Bridge, and then the section over by um, our maintenance building where there's two major speed humps in there. That is going to be repaired at least temporarily by streets. Um, so it'll be addressed uh, Chad, correct me, the next two weeks probably yep. is on we'll their schedule. Next week, yep. Yay. And that should get us through um, a couple of years. You know, it's definitely something that's not um, a reconstruction or anything, but it's we're working with streets. Again, what we're able to do is pay for the materials, and they come in with their equipment and their staff to do it. So um, that area, that area, like you and Bill had said, is, is really the, the terrible area. But then as people are driving in and out of the boat launch, you know, we've had boats that have – uh, their lower units have hit and been, some have been damaged. So um, a lot of the fishermen have complained and we've heard that. And so we said we have to do something right now. Okay. Oh, thank you. If there's no other questions, I'll jump in the 25. And again, I don't want to say take these with a grain of salt, but as you see the number of projects we have, um, I tried to request each year roughly about a million dollars with a project to keep it consistent, unless of course, if we have a big borrowing for um, whether it's our building, Menominee Park, Rainbow Memorial Park, that's gonna obviously jump these up depending on the funding. Um, but if you take a look at 2025, um, Rainbow Memorial Park improvements, West Haven Circle Park splash pad installation, Menominee Park lighting, I'm calling this phase one just because we can't uh, possibly try to tackle all the lighting in Menominee Park, but at least get us a start. Um, Menominee Park tennis court lights, um, we have not really received complaints from individuals that, um, you know, the lighting's, the light wasn't replaced out there when we did the renovation, but we definitely want to keep that on our radar in case we um, start to see that needed. Um, Quarry Park dog park, if you've been on for a while, you've seen this project in our radar, but keep getting pushed back. Um, again, it's, it's not a high priority for us at this point. Riverside Cemetery, again, every other year. Um, Red Arrow Park play equipment and surfacing. And then Red Arrow Park, uh, some of the lighting out there. I'll take any questions, um, comments, reorganization of anything. Um, and then once we're done, ultimately what I'd like to see is a, um, a recommendation from the board um, to the Common Council. What we do, once we come up with that final listing after tonight's meeting, we do give the Common Council a copy of the document um, as they get into the, the CIP budget and um, operating budget. So they'll get a copy of what you approve or recommend tonight. I would I would say at this point we'll wait and see wait and see how the the pickleball is at that point um, so right now basically it's it's an earmark of the project and um, as we get closer to those years we'd we'd take a look at that
Some of them are single courses, some of them are multiple courses, correct? Correct. There's yes. 44th and West Haven are two court complexes, and Stevens is a one court complex. Correct. And that, like I said, we'll take a look at that because if we need to look at expanding the surface of the court to, a, to accommodate some pickleball, it's a possibility, but it will add cost, um, and we'd have to take a look if there's available space. So, again, it's, it's really placeholder right now um, with a fairly – a fairly good estimate, but as we get closer, uh, we'll take a look at some of those, Lester, and, and see what, again, the, the demand is for those. In our discussions with the, the user groups, those would probably um, have 300-foot fences and um, be able to have accommodated fencing for um, some of the younger groups. We'd look at making sure we could get some temporary fencing, but making sure it's secure for some of the younger groups. Um, as far as the adult softball goes, a lot of the adult softball has been moved out to County Park already just because of the number of um, participants and teams going down and we continue to see that um, I think last year we started programming a lot more youth softball and baseball out at reach just because of the um, the number of adult teams that had gone down and we've shared this with the recreation department and they share their numbers with us um, so a lot of it gets shifted out to county park basically Lester I could oh I cut you off Lester, I could tell you just from being on this thing for almost 10 years, um, we, we've been talking about this from day one. And I think the other thing it does is it frees up more parking. If if we By the time this thing comes around, it, it's going to be four or five years. But that frees up way more parking and flexibility in that parking lot for fishing tournaments and things like that, too, if we shrink those fields and move them towards Hazel. So, um Ray, Ray probably disagrees with me a little bit, but no, we're, and that's part of the plan is to in, in, um, increase the parking going basically to the south as well. Like I said, where our current maintenance building is, and the volleyball nets, that becomes more parking, and hopefully, like Bill said, there will be less conflict with softball, baseball, and the boating public as well. I think the plan looks good. I'll make a motion to accept the plan. Okay. All right, so roll call then, Bartelt. Amy, or Lord, did you say yes? Yes. Okay, sorry. If everybody can turn their mute off while I do roll call, that would be super helpful. Thank you. Uh, Davis? Yes. Dearth? Yes. Royal? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Metz? Miller? Yes. Millet? Yes. Peschel? Motion passed 9 to 0 then. Thank you, everybody. All right, Ray, you want to do your... Director report, parks report? Sure. Before I get into the items on the agenda, I forgot during roll call to mention that Kendra um, from Leadership Oshkosh, I believe today is supposed to be your last meeting with us, um, but I know I saw an email come through from the chamber because of um, coronavirus that your leadership class, I think, is, class has been extended um, to be determined. So you may or may not be back. I'm not sure how they're going to handle the adjunct board members, but hopefully um, the, the few months that you were on um, was at least gave you an open view of what we have at the Parks Department as well as how the Advisory Parks Board and some of the city meetings work. And I'll stay in touch with you and um, 
um, Patty and John from the chamber once things open back up. Um, all right, I'm gonna jump into my report and what I wanted to do is use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about um, how coronavirus has affected the department, um, operations, facilities, and so forth. Um, kind of give you a little background on some of that. And uh, then I'll talk a little bit more about Lakeshore Park. I, I really touched on that already. But um, as far as the, the coronavirus issue goes, um, we're no different than a lot of you probably are with your work as well as with any businesses that you have. Um, many guidelines and considerations regarding um, our public facilities. I'm sure you, as you look at the governor's orders, um, playgrounds were some of the first things that were to be shut down. Um, you know, we we've, we've, uh, look at the CDC guidelines, uh, we look at the state, the governor's orders, but then we also work with our local public health officials um, as they make the final determination for each community on what they feel um, should or should not be opened up at certain points. So those are types of things that we looked at. Um, currently, um, either closed by the governor's order or, or by our local public health officials are just about um, most things in the parks. Um, however, trails, green spaces, things for biking, hiking, and walking, um, we've continued to promote um, throughout this entire um, pandemic that people need to be out in their public parks. We know that, we know um, to relieve stress, to relieve anxiety, uh, for the public health, people need to get out. Um, and, I'm, and I'm hearing a lot from people who um, haven't been out in the public parks in, in Oshkosh in a while, and I think they're rediscovering what's out there. Um, so to give you an idea, some of the things that remain closed um, until further notice, and again, you know, just like everybody on this call or in this meeting, we can't give you a date today saying this is when this will open or uh, this uh, facility will open. We're closely watching um, the governor's order. We're, we're closely watching um, the lawsuit that's taking place. But we also know that um, when we do decide to open, it's going to be made with decisions locally, um, whether that's through the public health officials, our emergency operations staffing, as well as the city manager in our department. So it's not going to be a, a flip of the switch, and we're um, opening up all facilities. But essentially, the playgrounds, sport courts, um, sport fields um, for organized use, basically, restrooms, um, the zoo, our amusement rides, our concessions, um, all of those facilities remain closed. Uh, you probably saw late last week, um, we had to make the, the difficult decision of um, advising the public that we are not able to um, open the Pala Community Water Park for the summer. And um, just like the, the news release said, a lot of things played into that decision. Um, everything from the, the social distancing, social gathering, things that um, not only from the governor's order, but from the CDC and their recommendations, um, everything for sanitation and disinfecting of common touch areas. Um, the social distancing would be, um, need to be monitored and enforced on the pool deck as well as in the pool water. Uh, the lazy river, if you know what a lazy river is, almost virtually impossible to social distance in a lazy river. Um, there's talk, you know, as far as if there's shared tubes for rides and so forth, um, that either those rides should not operate or if they are going to operate, um, the tubes, the handles and so forth would need to be disinfected between every rider. Um, so as we took a look at all that, staff safety, the safety of the public, um, the cleaning and disinfecting of all those areas, not to mention door handles, light switch, faucets, um, and then the staff shortage. And some and some of you may, may not know, um, but typically the, the recreation department through the school district, the YMCA, I believe, Lester, you guys offer lifeguard training programs. A lot of that is done through the school years or through the school season. And with the schools being closed and, and obviously the YMCA being closed, those lifeguard programs, uh, the lifeguard training programs can't be offered. Um, we were just over 50% of staffing at this point, And those were some that had committed to us. And whether or not, um, if we if we said we'd have to delay the opening of the pool late into June or early into July, that really put us as well as our staff that had committed to us in a very peculiar position. Because if we weren't able to open, those staff members, the 15 to 19 to 20 year olds that are working for 
uh, their school money and, and other things may have been uh, missing some opportunities to get jobs they knew they could rely on. So we, we took a look at a lot of those um, issues. Um, we were watching what was going on nationally as well as across the state um, where pools were um, seeing and hearing the same things and um, it was just a decision that we had to make and a lot of it again came down to um, the safety of the public and the staff but also those other decisions as far as staffing and um, other things related. So I wanted to make sure you're aware of, of all those items and, and it was not something that we took very lightly. Um, it, it was a lot of conversations for at least a three to four weeks going back and forth and, and just really not having available resources to, to do that safely. Um, so as far as what we're working on currently is, um, I'm sure just like any other business and anybody that you work for, you're, you're slowly working on some reopening plans. Um, we're looking at um, what do we need to do to keep the public safe, our staff safe, um, but also those, those certain steps we have to take for the social distancing requirements, uh, the, the cleaning and disinfecting. We gotta, you know, we've got the PPE order that our staff is gonna need to more frequently clean restrooms. Um, we're looking at the signage, the, um, um, the hand sanitizer stations, all those types of things that everybody's looking at to try to get those measures in place. Um, you know, like I said earlier, it's, it's not as easy as giving a date, saying the tennis courts are gonna open up as soon as the governor's order expires because that may not be the case. Um, we may take a look at certain um, amenities and say, you know, we need the restrooms open because we know the parks are getting busy. What do we need to do to get those restrooms open first? So those are some of the things we're talking about internally. Um, and then we can start looking at the amusement rides. Um, the zoo, we are currently looking at hopefully opening that facility early in June. But again, there's certain things that play into that that we need to make sure that, that we have in place before we start allowing the public in there as well. Ray. Um, I have a question, sorry. Yes. So, like like you said, getting the restrooms clean. If the restrooms are closed, I, th I think we should clean the restrooms now, lock them so they're ready to go When because they're not getting used. So, I mean, if we, if we clean them now, I, I think you can manage that process right now and then lock them, and then when they're ready to open, we, we could do some of those things. It's been managed. We never open for the season. They're closed. The water's up and running. It's turnkey, basically. So they're ready to go. Okay. They, right. they were clean from over the winter. We did our spring okay. cleaning, never opened them. So okay. we are, we're looking at those things okay. and a couple other, but definitely things we can do now, we're doing those. Roger so, that. Yep. Thanks. Um, just trying to look at my notes here. Some of the special events, as everybody knows, um, we have a lot of special events, zoo, parks, leech, um, all those areas. Um, Chad and, and Jenny and I have been meeting regularly talking about those. Um, we've been postponing or canceling some of our events that were scheduled for May and early part of June. We've been in contact with um, all of the bands that Jenny has booked for the Tuesday concert series that begins the Tuesday after the 4th of July. And we're letting those um, bands know that the first part of June will have a better feel for um, if the governor's order and the social distancing and social gathering items can be addressed properly. And if not, um, we'd have to start making some decisions on those special events that are further out into July and August, similar to you know some of the public events that you saw recently cancel and a lot of hard decisions um, by those individuals. But we're looking at the same types of things. Um, we're not promoting a lot of our events currently because um, again, we don't want to be promoting things um, that we may have to close, and we don't want to be promoting things at the same time where other events in the community are being um, postponed or closed as well. So what we're doing is we're holding off until towards the end of May, first week of uh, June or so, um, getting a feel for what we feel might be able to be, take place, and then uh, we'll start looking at promoting then. Um, I think that's all I have on the COVID and I'll take any questions if there's any that the board has. Tony. Um, I do have a couple questions, Ray. Um, but the first one is more out of curiosity. Have you guys found that compliance with the closed parks has been followed by the public? I've been, um, after the first probably two weeks or so, um, you know, we closed down the basketball courts, put signage up and um, we continued to see those being pretty heavily used. And so the police department was getting called out to try to deal with that. So police chief got in contact with us and he asked if we could take the rims down to obviously stop that. Um, once we did that, 
Um, obviously, there's no basketball being played. We've got some calls and questions early on about tennis and pickleball, but I think when we explained it and people understood the local concerns, um, that they were okay with that. The playground, surprisingly, when I drive around, people are respecting that. You know, we put caution tape up, we put signs up. Um, I I know that people are getting out using the trails, but it's, it's probably the busiest we've seen our parks since we've been here. Um, and I don't think we've had any major issues. At least I haven't heard anything from the police department, so. Well, that's, that's my observation too. It seems like the public has done a good job with that. Um, you mentioned the busyness of the parks, and um, I've noticed that too. As you look for, and as we want to go through the CIP, and you're finding that you're having to cut some funding, do you, do, are you able to parlay the amount of increase of use towards maybe some more requests of additional funding or anything like that? Because it's very clear that um, Oshkosh has discovered their parks um, over this time. Again, I think that's something that for me, to diffi it's difficult to do right now, just knowing the economic times that the city is in, that the businesses are in. Um, I think that hopefully um, the residents that are rediscovering how good the parks are over the next year or two, when hopefully we start to see this, uh, this everything settled down, they'll continue to support us and we can take a look at, um, you know, looking at some of those other things that you're probably referring to and probably, you know, leveraging some of that additional use towards some, some of the projects. So I think just right now it's, it's too premature and it's just, I don't think it's very, um, very feasible just based on the conditions. Sure. Um, my last question, maybe is Chad, this might be for you, but is there concern? I, I, I fully support the closing of the pool. It makes sense for all the reasons that, that you mentioned, Ray. Um, is there concerns with maintenance, um, not running all of that stuff over a longer period of time? We might have more problems with um, cracks or pumps not working and things like that. Like, what will you do this summer to still make sure that that park is able to be reopened when the time comes? You want to answer that or no? Go ahead. Uh, you and I talk. Um, actually, this is something we've we've talked about during our discussion of this too. But we will be operating the pools at low levels uh, for chlorine and uh, to keep all things operating. Uh, it cannot sit for that long a period without functioning. So you will see some operations taking place at that facility. A lot of things, Tony, I'll just I'll jump on that a little bit from what um, our discussions we've had for the last couple of months with people across the nation here in the state as well as the, um, the pool experts that we, that we deal with. Obviously, you need water in the pool basin so that there's not pressure and potentially heaving of your, your pool. Um, you know, you talked and Chad talked about some of the pumps and other things. We don't want to let just those sit there for essentially since last September until, you know, May of next year because of seizing up, um, rusting. You know, if you don't have water and chlorine running through those pipes, there will be um, build up in those. Um, so it's a lot of those things we had to take a look at, and we're actually trying to come up with at least a budget estimate um, for the council. Some of the council members have asked, what is it going to cost us just at least um, knowing that the pool's closed? There's not a huge financial impact, I would say, and just um, to give everybody an idea, the pool is in its own segregated fund. It's essentially an enterprise fund. Um, the city has been contributing tax levy since 2014. That levy hasn't increased. It's been $64,000 since 2014. Prior to us getting here, it was um, some of the years it was up around 74, 75. Um, what we've tried to do is keep that tax levy, levy level at $64,000. And then we try to make up the remainder of a balanced budget through fees, um, donations, um, support from the community foundation, our pool endowment at the foundation. Um, but as you know, and, and hopefully a lot of people know, there's not many pools, if any, around that are gonna make money. It's more of the quality of life, recreational opportunity. Um, so making money there is, is not gonna happen. And as far as the operations go, um, again, it's there's we're gonna come up with a budget number, but the tax impact is gonna be minimal because that 64000 was going to go into the pool either way. Um, and I don't see our expenses of just having to run it minimally is going to near that number at all. So we'll be working on that for the council and, and give them some kind of report once we have some further information too.
any other COVID related questions? All right, I'm gonna keep us going. Um, I already talked about Lakeshore Park phase one development, basically um, waiting on the, um, the next portion of the archeological study. Um, we'll be starting to work on <clears throat> the request for proposal for some of the design fee or design um, services out there. And um, that'll be our next step for some development there. All right, Chad. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to highlight some good things. I honestly, uh, it's been challenging enough with the COVID issue with staffing and things that we work with in the department. So we've done some modifications, how our crews are working and shifting, but it's honestly been one of the nicest springs we've had in two years to do any work out in the park system. And it's been unbelievable. And I just want to highlight a few things that aren't on the agenda that we've been able to get through that have been deferred um, this spring already. If you would have told me in early April, we'd be doing pouring concrete or doing groundwork out at Tech Miller Park and things of that nature right now, I would have said you're crazy. Um, but this has just been fabulous for us right now. And I know our, our crews and our staff have been very excited to know that they can get through some things uh, here through the current spring. Um, so we highlighted before, a lot of our facilities are pretty much ready to go. Uh, when we are expected to open, if that does occur at some level. Uh, so we're excited about that. But a couple highlights, um, you'll probably see a lot of work that's taken place over at Red Arrow Athletic Fields with top dressing and uh, seating, uh, fencing repairs that we're working on, infield restoration works that's taken place. Menominee Park, uh, shelter number four, which is right across or next to the maintenance building that was really tired looking facility uh, was restored. Our zoo aviary uh, that had a lot of rot issues throughout the windows and viewing panels, plus the front facade was uh, redone. Uh, Red Arrow concession stand roof was replaced. Uh, Roosh Park, you'll see some uh, memorial bench that was installed out there, plus a second pad for a future bench. Uh, also a drainage area that was improved uh, along the south side of the trail about halfway down where we we're having a lot of water drainage that spilled over the top. Um, uh, Tech Miller Park that we're spending a lot of time there. We finally got all our concrete poured for the batting cage and done a lot of site restoration. This week we're actually working on the field itself. Um, graffiti removal that you'll see at different areas at Boatworks uh, that's been taken care of along the pedestrian overpass bridge. Plus you'll be seeing that take place at the skate park here in the near future. Um, with one part of the report here with Menominee Park Zoo, we've had a very good, um, well, uh, some new changes coming to there with along with the Eagle exhibit and some things that transpired over the course of our spring as we got ready for our, our seasonal animals coming in and that nature. But one of our the vendors we've worked with in the past for our seasonal animals was closing their doors. Uh, then we had an opportunity to uh, work with the Zoological Society on the purchase of uh, some new animals for the exhibit or for the zoo, which we purchased a badger uh, and two red foxes. Uh, and an uh, albino raccoon uh, that are here. So those have been a great addition right now and we're working with them as we speak, um, hoping that we can have them open here for the, uh, for the, the zoo season. So um, that's all coming along very well. Also with addition to the eagle exhibit at the zoo, this has been the first time we've been able to work in that exhibit since September or late September. Uh, and uh, we're making some good improvements there with a, uh, a tree planting inside the exhibit and some uh, more landscape stuff that's we got to take care of right now before we can get things approved uh, with our permit uh, to get things squared away with the birds. Um, our, our zoo staff, both Stacy and Morgan, have worked diligently on getting together with rehab centers that we could add to our permit uh, with future concerns of what we want. When we need a bird, we can work with them and also with training opportunities. So things are moving forward with this exhibit. It has taken a lot longer than I anticipated or planned, uh, but we continue to look forward and I don't wanna put a specific date on it right now, but we will get things moving on that end or continue it. Um, in addition to the Oshkosh Community Playground that you'll see at Menominee Park, um, a lot of restoration work taking place right now um, with a, a combination of electric ourselves uh, and landscape operations within the four, uh, the Parks Department, uh, doing some of those modifications through there. It's been very nice not with having to deal with the, the, the traffic of people in certain areas. It's just been a blessing for us, as I said earlier, and um, hopefully we'll get these things through so they're up and running uh, for people when they get, can get out in the parks for those amenities. So, But it's been a great spring. I'm hoping it stays dry uh, so we can continue on those efforts. 
Well, if there's any other questions or concerns or things you see out there, we definitely take those from you. What's the manager's name? The place that came out, it was named Bucky, but we haven't come up with a name yet. So that's going to be, it might be a little contest, Becky. Might be a contest coming up. Becky, I've got a name, but I can't say it on TV. (laughs) For all of you Badger fans. Sounds good, Chad. Anything else? Any questions for Chad? Ray? Any other business? Nope. All right. I think that's a wrap. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second. Second. (laughs) All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. I think this worked out okay. Stay tuned. (laughs) Have a good night.